with names in local news. KDPG Sunday Edition. Good morning and welcome to the KDPG Sunday Edition. I'm John Delano. The end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020 has been scarred by a rise of anti Semitic hate crimes. The New York area has unfortunately seen several acts of violence. The most startling act occurred at a rabbi's home during a Hanukkah celebration in which five people were stabbed. It all hits close to home here in Pittsburgh, where we suffered the deadliest attack on Jews in American history. So what can be done to stop the violence? Our guest this morning has been confronting the rise of anti-Semitic attacks, Rabbi Jeffrey Myers of the Tree of Life Synagogue. And we're also joined by Jerry Micko, Senior Assistant Managing Editor for the Post-Gazette. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning. Rabbi, I mean, th this is so tragic, and the rise of anti-Semitism in America has been documented. We know that it has gone up. But let me ask you specifically about Pittsburgh. Has anti-Semitism risen in Pittsburgh from your personal perspective? While we might not see measurable increases per se in Pittsburgh, um, the Jewish community feels that an attack upon uh, members of the Jewish faith in another community is an attack upon the body Jewish nationally. Right. So even though we're not personally in Muncie, for example, nevertheless, we feel it most visibly here as well as do Jews around the country. So even though it wasn't in Pittsburgh, it was an attack upon all of us. Yes, and I can certainly appreciate and understand that. Do you personally or do members of your community feel unsafe here in Pittsburgh? I personally do not. Um, I would be lying if I didn't say there are members who, who are threatened uh, and afraid. Um, but yet at the same time, they're ones who are emboldened and outraged equally. Why do you think we've seen this extraordinary increase in anti-Semitism in America? I can't give one specific answer that solves the entire issue because anti-Semitism has been around as long as there have been Jews. Um, and it's not ever going away. But that being said, um, I think there are a number of causes that, that each have their own percentage in it. Um, when people are unhappy about their lot in life, frequently they're going to try to find a scapegoat. And a scapegoat's going to always be a minority. Frequently it happens to be the Jewish community that becomes the scapegoat for the ills of others. Um, certainly, uncivil discourse in our country doesn't help when it gives permission for everyone to then speak the same way. Uh, the internet, particularly social media, is a cesspool uh, of training manuals on how to be an anti-Semite and how to carry out attacks. So these are some of the disparate elements that just have this groundswell. Right. Plus also the more the media reports it, I think it emboldens others to say, oh, I want to get my name in the news. Here's a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Myers, especially in our city, but across the nation too, you're seen as someone who is, is a leader and will speak out about uh, this issue like you just did so eloquently. But how do you talk to your congregation? What do you tell them? I read a piece you wrote uh, recently talking about the H word, but you mentioned hope as part of that. Is that also part of your message that you try to deliver? Absolutely, that uh, we need a balance. And right now we feel imbalanced the news that we regularly read and hear about is just filled with violence. Where's the balance that we all need as Americans of, of good? And I think that's part of my role and responsibility to pastor my flock is to say, there is hope. There are so many really good, decent people out there that we don't hear about who toil in anonymity. We need to hear more of their stories to see that peace on earth, goodwill towards men and women is not merely Christmas time. It should be every day of the year right. we need to do those things. We need more good stories, not fluff, but good, decent people to reassure us there are more good people than there are. Isn't that a message to media? Less <laughs> subtle than you, you might think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's always been interesting to me. Uh, I'm very active in my Christian church. I think to be anti-Semitic is anti-Christian. I mean, I, the, given the origins of Christianity, 
how can any Christian be anti-Semitic? It's, it's like being against your own faith. How has the Christian community in this area reached out to you? With love, with compassion, um, with support. Um, and it's really been uh, beautiful to see from all different denominations, mm -hmm. Roman Catholic as well as Protestant, um, all different groups. So yes, there's been continued support. Um, we need more than that nationally. Do you think we set a good example here in Pittsburgh? I believe we do. And I think there are lessons we can teach the rest of the country about how good people can work together. I think we all like hearing that. Of what are some of the specifics that we here in Pittsburgh could do to combat anti-Semitism? We need to get to know our neighbors better. You know, despite the beauty of, of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, um, <laughs> we live in silos. We don't know our neighbors as well as we think we do yeah. or we should. Um, if you know your neighbor, you're less likely going to go down that darker path towards violence. So we really need to make sure that we, we get to know all of our neighbors equally. Yeah, I like that one. Is there a, a part of, of what's going on in the country now, and you mentioned it some earlier in this segment, uh, you saw what happened in New York. You read, we read about it um, during Hanukkah attacks and then uh, the last one finally in Muncie. Is, is it just, it's kind of flared up again, or has it always kind of been there, we're just not hearing about it as much. Hard to believe you wouldn't hear about it in this day and age of, of television and, and, and social media. What, a, do you think there's been a, is it just a, a flare up or what do you think is causing that? I mean, I'm not sure about why the New York area, other than it has the most visible population of Jews in the United States. When I say visible, you can recognize uh, the Orthodox Jews because of their garb, and they become, for many of them, targets, which is a terrifying thing for all Jews to know that you're attacked simply because you dress in a particular way. Um, it bothers me because uh, I'm from there. Right. Um, that's my community. That's my home. And um, I wish I could say, here, I have the answer, and now here's the solution, and now here's the Nobel Peace Prize. It just doesn't work that way. There's um, much soul searching that needs to go on, but I think that's, that's for our country. If life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is a sacred document, it has to be sacred for all Americans. And those who don't practice that, that's being un-American. When you're not welcoming to all people who live here, that's un-American. Let me, uh, if I may, come back to the media and what we can do about okay. it. Because uh, obviously the two of us are involved in media quite a bit. Uh, do you think we overplay or over-report instances of anti-Semitism, or don't you think, or isn't it right to expose what's going on? How is it that we could do a better job? I agree that we need to call it out for what it is, anti-Semitism, but that should be the same for all forms of racism right. and bigotry. It must be called out. People who speak and act that way must be ostracized and must learn as a society. This is not part of what it means to be an American and live in America. Um, so that's an important education component. Um, but I'm also, you know, I have my pulse on, on my congregation and uh, you continually face violence. Um, the news is always just about the violence. And you know, I wrote a, a blog about it this week that out of 30 minutes of news, there's roughly six minutes of commercials, 23 minutes of news, out of the 23 minutes is one minute of good maybe. Yeah, right. <laughs> we need to restore some sort of balance and the question is who's going to be the brave network to say we need to have a little better balance because the news affects the psyche of every American. So where's more good to encourage people to do more good? And I think the news needs to partner better with the community to give more good, not, not fluff, yeah. good. So don't fail to report the instances, yeah. but toss in some good news along with it. Yeah. Yeah. Derek? Uh, you know, one of the things I think when you talk about, if I can stay on the media point, is that, you know, people tend to say, hey, you know, we want to know what the news is. Well, this is the news. 
one of the things that readers often tell us at the Post Gazette is that our little column, Random Acts of Kindness, is extremely highly read. So we do try to balance, but we also need to cover an issue like this. This is a, a, an issue that's been going on, quite frankly, for a few years in the country, the rise of hate groups, the rise of more hate speech. Do each of us in media also have a, have a, uh, a I should say, a, I want to say a job to, to call that out all the time? Some people then say, well, you're just covering the people who probably shouldn't be covered. Great question about how does media find balance? Right. Um, and whether it's print or broadcast, you struggle with it every day. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily a, a good answer to that. Um, but um, I can only say as, as a consumer, um, to watch, say, the 11 o'clock news, which leads off with all of these acts of violence and so forth, for me to watch that and then go to sleep, that's depressing, I must say. <laughs> and um, I can't be the only one who feels that way. Um, what about taking the challenge of putting the random acts of kindness on the front page of the Post-Gazette? I'll talk to Keith Burris. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi, we only have about 30 seconds, so let me just ask you finally, what is it that you would like all of us here in Pittsburgh, regardless of our faith background, how can we be helpful to the Jewish community in times of anti-Semitism? We all need to know our neighbors better. Um, you can't necessarily walk a mile in their shoes, but once you know someone better, it's less likely that you're going to then H them, as I say. So we need to do a better job to know our neighbors. We need kids in school to have opportunities to get to know all of their neighbors. And when we do that, then we can all be equal in society. You don't have to love them, but it's less likely you're going to have something negative about them if you know them. So we really need to work harder, all of our communities, to know each other better. Getting to know our neighbors. Now, that's a real Pittsburgh thing. <laughs> yeah. Rabbi Jeffrey Myers, thank you, sir, very much for joining us today. We thank appreciate you. it. Up next on the KDPG Sunday edition, we're going to take a look at Pittsburgh's new real estate developments. Two experts will lay out the big projects that are on their way in 2020.